This is actually joint work uh, with uh, Prashant Chinoy, who is a professor in the CS department, David Irwin, who just became a new faculty member in our department, and then, you know, Dilip already, and Naveen, who is a, who is a PhD student of, no, he's actually a PhD, he just graduated last week. Congratulations, Naveen, from here. Um, and we work together on this, and so we are looking into, um, you know, how can we actually build more power efficient or power saving caches? And so um, let's talk about that for, for a moment. And, uh, the, the, the ideas here um, to use this for multimedia caching um, in terms of, you know, building something that is, um, can respond to, um, um, you know, situations where you don't have reliable power. And I'll point out a couple examples in a moment. And so the overall goal with these caches is, as, as we always do with, with caches, um, reduce the bandwidth usage and re reduce latency because we want to get high quality uh, content as fast as possible, right? We all are kind of impatient. And I actually try to be quick because we all impatient want to go for dinner. So um, I can browse through this because you're all experts on this. What do we do with a cache? So here's the scenario. We're actually looking here for into the scenarios with uh, cellular or m uh, mobile networks. Um, so you re if you retrie uh, retrieve it, it has always good to go from the base station all the way up to the redirect it or proxy cache redirect it. You can cache your content, and when you have the same request, the second rec later request for the same content, you just uh, get it from here. Now, what we are looking at in our specific scenario here is is actually um, that in developing countries, you know, um, wired. Uh, networks are not so popular. Wireless is very popular because it's, there's not much infrastructure. And putting out new infrastructure this way is a lot easier, available at the full extent. So um, generators are used to power these cells. Um, there's also initiatives, as you can see on this picture here, to uh, use uh, renewable energies like solar and wind. Now, if you look at this trace down here, which is a solar trace we took on our campus, you know, Massachusetts is probably not the best place for look, taking solar traces. But anyway, just to give you an example, um, you see that, you know, this is not, this is not great, especially in the winter time. You know, it's, it's, it goes up and down, and so you don't have the power you need all the time, right? So, so how do, ca but can we adapt to this? Can we actually adapt and still deliver a, a somewhat useful service? So, you know, solar is bad because of the weather. Wind, wind is very variable. And then even if you have, you know, oh, well, why not put a diesel generator to it? Well, you have someone to go out once in a while and refuel, right? So if you forget that, your system goes completely down. So um, the idea is to build what we want, want, want to do with green caches, build a, put, build a multimedia cache for intermittent power and use, uh, um, uh, uh, demonstrate its uh, you know, capabilities in the term of uh, uh, off-the-grid cell towers. So um, the challenges here are actually, um, you know, what happens if you don't, cannot access the cached content in terms of, um, you know, not, not sufficient power because that's going to have an impact on your quality or in increased consumption of uplink bandwidth to the server and increased la latency, increasing buffer time and so on. So we want to minimize that with, with all. So, so you can see it, this is kind of a problem, which is the regular caching problem, plus you have intermittent power, right? So that, you know, and then we want to minimize the having to retrieve content from the original server as much as possible. So minimize bandwidth usage, usage and minimize the buffering times are, are, are our main goals, nothing new. So here comes a little bit more of, 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 a, of new stuff and that's actually blinking. What is blinking? So blinking is actually now if you look at, um, at um, um, APC S3, right? Suspend to RAM, you can actually turn on and off your computer completely very fastly. So it's duty cycling. It's something that the sensor folks have been doing for a long, long time, wireless sensor networks. You duty cycle sensors based on when you want to sense, sense something, right? Now, we, could, we can think of, you know, we can actually do this also for caches. And I'll show you in a moment why. Just to, just to give you an idea to introduce blinking. So you have blink intervals. And as you see on top, this is 100% uh, duty cycle. So you have 100 full power. Right? If, you, if you only have 50% power available, you turn your you, you turn your cache on and off in this blinking interval. So it's 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 on for half of the period and then off for half of the period. So that's kind of the blinking approach in general. And this is very efficient. Forgot to mention that because when you when you turn it off, you go you, you go down to 90% power. You reduce your power consumption by 90%. So that's that's really that's that's really a power efficient approach. Now there's different blinking policies actually that. Um, that have been developed, and so 
um, you know, you can do something that's activation. So you turn something completely on or completely off. So here we have four nodes. If you have only 50% of the power, you turn only f uh, two of the four nodes on uh, in this case. What you can also do is you can do synchronous blinking and you blink them all for, um, for only uh, a quarter of that, that, of that time, time interval. And so um, you have a synchronous blinking where they're all on, uh, where they're all on for a much uh, shorter um, amount of time. What you can also do in addition is actually that you do an asymmetric blinking where you can actually, for example, do this load proportional. Depending on how much load goes to each of these different, if you think of that as, as, as servers in a, in a, in a distributed ca or in a multi-server cache system, you can have one on all the time and then have uh, different blinking intervals for the other nodes. So, so, so the fourth node is only on for very short periods to cover additional load, so to speak. And, and so you can cover a lot of load from the node that's, that's uh, on for all the time. Now, why, why, why can we use this in the terms of caching or video streaming in general? So this is, this is, the, en this is the enemy of your work, actually, <laughs> because what you can do is, you know, especially uh, you can, w if, if your server's on for, sh if your cache is on for a short amount of time, you, you, you stream your stuff to the client as fast as you can. The client fills his buffer as much as it can. It, the server goes off, and then you can stream. So that's kind of what I'm showing here. This is what you get from the cache uh, uh, to the client. You fill up your buffer, uh, the cache turns off, you drain your buffer, but since this is a much higher rate, you can stream out a constant stream at your client, right? Now, why are we, so, so, so let me say this in a different way. Um, since you want to still have resources available, uh, one thing that is important when you think of blinking is you're building a kind of um, component cache. You're building, as we will show later, not one big server with a big disk, but you build, but you build this out of m uh, multiple smaller servers, because you have this power saving really when you go, uh, when you really put it into the suspend to RAM mode, right? So if you have one monolithic machine and you put the suspend to RAM, you lose all all, uh, all resources, right? But if you have uh, smaller s uh, pieces, you can turn on off. You have more flexibility and you can adjust more to the available power. Right? So that's, that's, that's one of the basic blinking ideas here, that also your infrastructure is a little bit different than just having one significant cache. So, um, you know, our goal is redu reducing bandwidth cost to up, up to the providers. You know, you all know that, you know, increase of smartphones is like crazy these days. Just look at the recent Pew Institute studies, what's happening in the U.S. with, with smartphone increase just over a year. Um, it's very popular. Videos on phones becomes very popular. So the, actually, the, the the cell phone providers are battling with that. They want to reduce all this because it's a lot of traffic that's going up, a lot of money they have to pay. So, um, so a couple of things I want to show you. Um, as as you know by now, we are big fans of our traces. And f uh, there's a I don't know. It's it's incredible how much data is in these traces. So one thing what we did is also we actually took our traces and and, and said, how much of a video do people actually look, watch? And what you see is actually here, um, this is the percentage of the session, and that is uh, uh, how much, so how much percent of all, all of our video sessions we had in our traces uh, watch zero to 20 seconds, right? So a lot of users just look the beginning, right? They just watch the beginning and say, oh, boring again, don't want to see that, right? So there's only, and, and you can see the further out you go, the, the, the lower the rate here gets, right? So when you think of caching, when you reduce your latency, what's, what, what do you want to do? Have the beginning of the video on the cache, right? That's normalized for video uh, did, it, did we normalize that for video links? Do you know that? Yes. Yes, OK, thank you. Uh, he did the work, as you, as you know. <laughs> also, also, here's your long tail, right? This is the popularity of the videos that got uh, requested in our trace. You can see there's only a few ones that are very popular, and then you have this really, really, really long tail uh, for, for user-generated content. So this, is, um, so this is important that, you know, that, that, that information led us to, first of all, segmentation. Break the video up in, in small pieces and always cache, you know, uh, cache for, always cache and always make available the first segment of these videos. And then the other is, um, you know, um, the, the, the long tail distribution. And then, uh, so one of the issues is actually, with, which I will show you in the next slide in the illustration, is that you have long buffering times at low power, because when the power is low, you, you're blinking interval. You're bringing these, these different components on, 
at, at different intervals, and you have, if you have a piece of information on a server that's not up right now, you have to wait, right? So that brings you this to this in, into this interval. You want to avoid that. So um, what we came up with is an approach that we call, uh, nice term, I don't know why we couldn't find anything better, staggered load proportional blinking. So what we do here is actually that, you know, we know we have a, f we have a relatively small amount of content that's very popular. And so we blink these, in this example, these three nodes um, with different lengths. So this is up 50% of a blinking interval. This is up 30% of a blinking interval, and this only 20%. So the most popular content gets stored here, right? So the most popular content gets stored here, and then you know, we distribute less popular content based on the popularity on the other, um, on the other blinking uh, nodes that are in this, in this whole blinking system. But we always keep the first segment on all the nodes. We distribute the first segments over all the nodes because then that's available uh, immediately to someone who makes a request, right? And so, so the less popular content means the, the last 80% of a particular video or there are less popular videos? Less popular videos in this case, right? So um, that's, um, that's um, you know, how, how this uh, staggered load proportional blinking works, and you see how then over time these different uh, uh, components come on in, 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 the, in the blinking system. So um, if you guys remember, um, no, this is what, this is what something, um, no, now I'm confused myself, wonderful, it's late in the day. Um, the, um, um, we, we, uh, everyone who was here, no, not here, but MMSYS 2011, we did some work on prefetching actually videos from the related list and, 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 and showed how that improves the, um, the hit rate. Uh, so, so if you, what, what did it show before, you have your related list, so you just get the, the, the first segments or se first, several first segments of all the videos that are listed there because users are very high likely to, 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 to choose from that related list as we've shown uh, from our traces. So what we do is also we not only cache based on requests, but we also are proactively um, get the prefixes from this request uh, that show that are from the related list videos that are listed for these requests. And so we put them also on uh, and, and um, uh, to reduce the buffering time for that. So um, this is the basic concept, the basic idea, and here's the architecture. So um, what you see here is actually that the system uh, consists out of a proxy that is always on. There's a power manager that takes information about the power signal, and I'll talk about this in a second, a uh, little bit more. And then you have your blinking cache, and these are the different cache components. So in this case, these are all standalone units that, that, rep uh, that represent a, 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 a cache server, and then have a power client that communicate with the power manager to uh, decide when they are on and when they are off. Right? And that can be adapted based on the available power. So that's, that's the general architect architecture of that system. Uh, we also have uh, the base station and then the, the mobile clients. We shouldn't forget that because that's where we actually want to get the video out to. So in, uh, in, the actual, in the real case, what you want, first of all, you want a battery because you still have to buffer a little bit, right? So you have to keep your system on, you have to keep your proxy on, the base station, and then depending on what the fill level of the battery is, based how it's filled from, you know, maybe alternative resources, uh, energy sources here, you can then uh, decide what blinking on the wall you wanna, uh, you can run based on, on that uh, power you have, uh, have what blinking strategy you can run based on the power you have available. So um, Naveen and especially Prashan has been working in sustainable, you know, computing energy for for a long, long time, and so what we have uh, based based on their work is actually um, traces. So they actually put uh, a couple of years ago some wind generators on the roof of the computer science building and collected traces. There's a solar panel. They collected traces over several years. So now what we have is actually we have these traces, and they have built a programmable power supply where you can actually then um, simulate. Uh, energy being generated based on these traces and then fill and drain that battery on the other side based on that. So that's kind of part of the system um, that, that we have uh, in the lab here. So I um, showed you the architecture. The green cache uh, prototype itself is implemented in, in Java. It pro uh, it, uh, the proxy, proxy implements the chunking of the videos. 
the prefetching, and then also what I haven't mentioned so far is migration, because if things change with um, popularity, we move when it, when 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 the video uh, increases in popularity, it gets moved from a server that's not that's not that's that's on less to move a, uh, to move to a server that's on uh, much more, or we just also get evicted if we run out of space on the whole blinking system. Uh, we have a cl Java client to simulate browsers that actually uh, replace, uh, replace the information we have in our traces. And then, you know, these guys, our students really like Java, so they also uh, write their tools to analyze this uh, information in Java and uh, um, allows us to present these res results. The test deployment, so we really put a system together on that. Uh, we have a cluster of 10 Mac minis. Um, you know, it's just simple dual cores. Uh, they have two gigs of ROM. They all have a 40 gig uh, solid state disk. So 10 times 400 gig of overall cache space, um, but not always available. We have a WiMAX base station on campus. And so what we did is for, uh, for some of the experiments, we actually um, replayed some of the traces from that WiMAX base station, so we have the complete setup as you would have it with a green cached uh, uh, wireless system, as I described in, in the beginning. Um, the, the metrics I mentioned already, our solar and wind traces um, over, uh, from, the, from, from the deployment as, uh, of uh, wind generators and solar panels, our YouTube traces, and then um, with usage and buffering time um, as a result of that. Right? So here you see one of uh, the results. What you see here is actually we differ differentiate with just drawing, you know, complete videos per um, blinking node and not chunking it, and then looking at video chunking. And you see the bandwidth usage, and you see uh, one is just LIU eviction uh, replacement approach. Then we do a popularity aware. I didn't mention that you can look this up in the paper. We do a little bit of a, you know, based on the information we have, based on requests, and also a little bit of a uh, average uh, um, window-based prediction. Uh, uh, talk, uh, look into the po popularity, and then we do an optimal because we have the traces. So we 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 we, we take the optimal as the as the upper bound here. How good could we be if we could really watch into an hour class and see what the popularity would be in the future? And you can see that um, that in video uh, chunking, the chunking of the video because of the fact that users always request this first part or initial parts of the video, you can uh, improve the performance by 15%, meaning reducing bandwidth usage, usage up to the original server. And, um, and popularity eviction is actually uh, something that improves um, uh, 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 is better than 7% than uh, the LIU, LIU approach. So um, that's, that's one of the results we had. So this is really something we run with the system as I introduced you, uh, as I showed you before. And uh, we also looked into um, power variations. So what you see on the left-hand side is actually if you have 20% you know, power available, 20% of full power available, 50% of full power available, and 80% of full power full power available, and you see here the different um, approaches as, des as described before. And so um, what, you, what you actually see is when you, have, when you have really low power, when you go into the activation method, that, that's the one approach I showed you really in the beginning where you just have one server on and then turn it off completely. There's not so, mu so many different, different of the nodes, of the 10 nodes, you don't, you don't blink, you don't turn on and off as often, right? So, so, so you turn off more in, in one step, right? A lot of machines get turned on, turned off, and on in one step. So there's not so much f um, overhead through the blinking because if you blink more machines um, in, at different intervals, there's still this couple seconds of taking it down, up and down. So so if you do that, that's why it performs very well for low power. But then th the more power you get, um, you can see that uh, load proportional or the staggered approach um, uh, is actually uh, improving in in in, in performance. Um, what is also important is uh, that with when, you, when we looked at um, oscillation, where the power um, is actually going up and down every five-minute intervals, if I remember correctly, and so we see that when, when we have, you know, it, and it's, it's only 10% of the original power, so it goes up to full and then temp uh, um, 
No, it's 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 from uh, forty-five percent uh, to full uh, uh, to full power, and um, uh, it does it every uh, you know that happens um, ten percent of the time, thirty percent of the time, and then fifty percent of the time, and you can see that um, that for the uh, staggered load proportional, the uh, um, there is there is um, um, there is the migration is independent of um, the, the, the standard. Sorry, let me let me say it a different way. The, the, the staggered load proportional improves in performance because the migration uh, that's performing is actually independent of the power level because we don't turn everything on and off in a synchronized fashion. Because but we have things off on if, at, at different points in times and so can then um, make the content available and also um, act to, um, you know, uh, the mig migration supports that, but because we can push more, um, more popular content up to uh, a server that's actually blinking more often. One thing I want to show you quickly before, um, before I finish is actually uh, also the, um, the buffering time here. And so what you see in, on that slide is actually uh, you know, one of the experiments, the, the, the time of an experiment we ran here, and mm -hmm. the buffering time, and here the, 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 the power in watts. And this is actually from one of the traces, right? So you can see that, you know, this is replaying one of, uh, I, f I forgot if it's a solar or wind trace. I think it's a solar trace. We're re replaying the power that's available for the blinking system. And what you see here is the different approaches again. And you see that the staggered low proportional approach um, where you actually replicate the first chunks really keeps the buffering time down because you have the chunks on all the chunk the first chunk of, of all the cached videos you have it on all the all the blinking nodes right so you can immediately get this first chunk so you get you buy a little bit of time because you get this extra time now and if your chunk is large enough um, to get um, the second part uh, from a from a to to if your chunk if the playout time for your first chunk is long enough to have enough time to get the second chunk you need, and the server comes that the server that stores that comes up doing the blinking and doing its blinking, well, then then you can play out the continuous two chunks, and then hopefully the continuous continuous window. So that really is important of, of like kind of you know getting these first chunks all over because you buy your, yourself a little bit of buffer time. You can now get this information in the client, and then and then play it out. Okay, and you can see here actually, this is one of the, the cases highlighted a little bit where the power really goes down. That uh, in the case of the uh, stagger load proportional, the, the buffering time only goes quite a, a little bit up. So, a uh, quick look at related work. Um, that is, um, you know, chunk and prefetching to improve video performance is not really new. Um, Jennifer Rexford and a couple other friends from UMass have done that already uh, in 1999. Uh, Don Towsley was one of the co-authors. Segment-based caching, uh, Joel Wolf uh, has had a publication in, in WW2001. Um, LIU is around for a long time. There's other uh, eviction uh, or replace methods like clock. And um, as, as DLIP has pointed out already before, there's um, the work from uh, our colleague Ramesh, Simar Sim Ramesh Sitaram on uh, stream quality how and how it impacts user behavior. And it shows that you actually want to get video started. He has shown it with his experiment that even I think a two second delay turns you viewers off from watching videos. And then we have actually, um, after based on our MMSYS 2011 work, some extensions, we have actually a publication on some of the trace-based studies uh, uh, in, in, an, in an Elsevier journal. So, um, as I've shown you, you know, we, we're looking into how you can uh, perform caching in the term of, you know, intermittent power, uh, which uh, becomes an, uh, an important topic in, in not, not necessarily maybe in all the developed nations, um, but, but in the developing countries, you've probably heard about power outages and problems in India. Um, sometimes when I think of, you know, hurricanes and other stuff in the US, I don't know, maybe we need this also there too at some point in time. So it's, 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 it's something that, and maybe saving power is not a bad idea in general. So, you know, the, so that's, and we're trying to see how we can um, use blinking and building 
um, you know, a cache that is that is flexible because it consists it, it, it's built of s several smaller nodes um, to um, you know to kind of adapt to the available power and still give kind of a you know reliable uh, acceptable service. And uh, you know that's uh, it's important to have the first chunks because that really improves uh, the, the the performance of the overall system. Um, um, with with no, there's one thing I want to mention because um, you know, Ketan okay, is not here, but he mentioned that. So one one thing we're also interested in is really looking end to end, right? So what we have not done yet here is, but what might be really interesting is where you also want to really save power is on your client, right? Usually a mobile smartphone has a battery, and you you want to keep the battery as uh, alive as possible. So when I showed you this one picture where I said I stream on a high bandwidth out to the client, then I turn the server off. Can I, for example, t t take my network interface down for that, si for that period of time on the client side, save battery power, drain the buffer, turn it back on again, right? So I don't know how much sense that makes, but, but our interest is really in looking at more of an end-to-end -end approach in that. How can you combine that to make the system as power efficient as a whole? We haven't done that yet, and that's part of the, of the future work we want to look in. So with that, I would like to finish my talk. I would like to take the opportunity, since I'm the last speaker, to thank you guys for hanging out with me for <laughs> that. And I, I want to like to thank also the organizers, um, Carsten, Roger, um, all the students, Hawkon, who, who just did, did made this a wonder, wonderful experience. Uh, it's nice to be part of that community. It, I had a wonderful time here in Oslo. Uh, if my wife wouldn't want me to come home, I would stay for another week. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. If you're not too hungry, I might make also be, might also make it take a, t a question or two. <laughs> <laughs> Clara has one. Uh, okay, it was very interesting. But um, I have a question in terms of related work, um, uh, f uh, chunk sizes, uh, the relation between uh, chunk sizes and the power. Um, are you going to study how big the chunks could be? So for example, what happens if currently your power goes down in the middle of yeah. the chunk? Or is that something uh, not possible? You know, I, the, the only, I haven't thought about this, honestly. I know that, th that Joel Wolf in, in his uh, WW2001 paper, he had done chunk size based on popular, no. He does smaller chunks in the beginning and increases the chunk size chunk towards sizes, the end of yeah. the video, mm -hmm. also because he can start filling the buffer for, uh, mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. Same as in our case, users kind of you know, don't watch all the way to the end. And then also he evicts uh, you know, from the tail on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I some don't kind of, sort of sizes of the chunks. Right. Uh, uh, because uh, you currently also adjust towards how the power and the right. solars will right. have. So the question currently is we always sort of teach in the networking, you don't mm. preempt right. until the packet is done. Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. the question is uh, what happens in this power case where you do You have to, right? Yeah. Right, you have yeah. to. Um, yeah, we, we have not provision. We, we assumed equidistant or equ equal sized uh, chunks in, in this case, so we haven't looked at it. And into the chunk basically goes through. Yeah. Yeah. Any, <coughs> any further question? Uh, one quick question. Does Mac Mini support blinking? Excuse me, sorry? Do Mac Mini support blinking right now? No. Do right? Mac Mini support blinking? Yes. Yeah. Because you can, yeah, yeah, the, the um, I always get ACPI. That's, that's supported by the Macs. You, you can do that. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, another question, just out of curiosity, you mentioned that in the future work, you are going to study end to end yeah. uh, saving, and uh, you want to turn off the network interface on yeah. mobile devices, yeah. right? Uh, but we all know that uh, I think Professor Chen in uh, George Mason did a lot of this kind of work, uh -huh. turning off the network interfaces while you know sending sending data in bursts and turn off the network interfaces. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of difference uh, do you imagine that if you have this end-to-end -end, uh, solution? Well, how would that be different from uh, their solution in George Mason? Um, I, th I think it would not be really different. I think it's, it's a little bit an of addition work on kind of how you synchronize that. Um, also, there's some kind of, you know, how much, you know, this blink the blinking can change. The intervals, the blinking uh, periods don't stay um, 
fixed over the time because they have to adapt to what power is available, right? So there's a there's a b little bit of a signaling problem. So that's kind of the, the things. I don't think that the t f real turning on and turn turning off is is something new, right? It's really the the combining that in the whole system is 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 the add-on, so to speak. Thank you. Yeah. One one quick question. So are you trying to to make the blinking uh, duty cycle um, dynamic right now, or is uh, is still static at this point? To make it dynamic, yeah. So it's dynamic, right? Yeah. Now? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. One more. <laughs> <laughs> We're hungry. <laughs> I think it's time for dinner. It's <laughs> a very quick one, actually. So, do you have any of these traces available online, or how can? Yeah, the the traces are the the YouTube traces are online, and I think the power traces are also online. Yeah, we can we can talk offline, uh, online, offline. <laughs> actually, I have a very. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. easy out for me here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I missed something, but yeah. but I think I'm thinking if you have enough uh, energy for, uh, uh, for example, two two servers which yeah. which can be active for half of time, yeah. then why can why can you just have one one server, and uh, with 100 percent on time? That's with a that's a very good disk. question. It only works if you have enough if you have enough Better. energy to run this one server all the time. If you don't have enough energy to run this one server, you, you have to take it down completely. If you have two smaller servers that take the um, same amount of energy, you can take one half down and, uh, and live with less energy and still have something running. It's degraded, right? It th think of a, think of a uh, grace graceful degradation is kind of what blinking is in the end. Right? So the problem is the uh, is capacity of battery. It's I yeah. Well, what b capacity? You know, th th yeah. That we had a big discussion about this. You have to think of the the battery only a buffer, right? And yeah, if you have an in infinite battery, then you have a huge buffer, right? Yeah. And and, and but 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 um, it's 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 not only the battery. It's also how you fill the battery. What gets into the battery, right? So if you're taking f stuff fast out of your battery, then you can can fill it in, and you have to reduce the load because else it's going to drain completely at some point in time. Thanks. Okay, next thing is Michael again. Thank you.